is a precious, precious person, and I am so honored today that she's here. I've always said it, but uh, just to think about the things that, that God has uh, placed in her life. And of course, we miss her husband, a dear friend of ours. Uh, Bishop Millman was a very close friend, and there's been times I've been to their house and spent time with them. We've been out to eat. We rode motorcycles together and all like that. And, uh, but, but just precious, precious person. And today, we don't bring her here because she's just precious. She's a handmaiden of the Lord that God has called to reach this generation. And we are so honored to have her here. We want you to just put your hands together for this wonderful woman. Is that word finished? 
So I've been to Liberia several times, and we're building a school there, just brief commercial. Um, these children, we got there, actually the way I got there was, I was invited to teach teachers in Liberia. <coughs> because I have a master's degree in teaching and education, uh, I was asked to come there and train teachers. And then after we finished the training, uh, we just went sightseeing. And my teacher mind doesn't shut off. And I saw a bunch of kids standing around, and I was like, why are these kids standing around? They need to be in school. I said, there isn't any school. It was destroyed by their civil war. And the war was years ago, but they just don't have the money to rebuild. And I was saying on the plane going home, I said, somebody ought to do something about that. Somebody ought to do something about that. <laughs> somebody. <laughs> and um, the sister said, I think it's you. <laughs> I was like, mm -mm, I can't even nail I, I can't hit a nail straight trying to hang a picture. But as I began to pray about it, the Lord said, if you will give me a yes, I will give you everything you need to complete the task. And he has literally, he is doing that right now. Now, building a school in another country is not as easy. I mean, you know, there is no Walmart, there is no Lowe's, there is no Menards. You know, there's a jungle, and uh, we bought 50 acres of a jungle, and I mean a jungle, like Tarzan jungle. And um, we went there in November, and we finished the greenhouse. And I told God, I said, we need, we need four streams of income so that we don't have to keep coming to the states, raising money to pay teachers, and buy books, and all that. And so the Lord dropped in my mind the four streams of income, and uh, one of the streams was the aquaponics greenhouse. And they'd never heard of that, it was foreign to them, but when, we, when I explained it and all of that, uh, we literally built a 30 by 60 greenhouse in the middle of a jungle. And we're going to raise fish and vegetables, and uh, we're going to feed children, and. The remaining we will sell to restaurants so that we will our produce will be fresh to the restaurants and that income will come back to the yeah. school. Yeah. And we'll have a solar, farm, a solar farm that will run all of our electricity and then store it in a solar battery and sell the energy to the city. And we will also have a man. He doesn't even know me. Actually, I don't know him either. Now he's talked on the phone, but he's given me a water refining system that cleans 90,000 gallons of water a week. So we'll be able to sell water, and that income will go back into the school as well. So we know God is moving and he's helping us. <laughs> we can use all the help. I mean, God has sent help. He just sends help. You know, we, we needed to buy 50 acres, and the man that was selling the acreage, I said, well, you know, how I'm, I'm not, I'm not a digger. You tell me how much, I'll pay it. And they were like, no, 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 don't pay it. Don't do it like that. And uh, so I said, well, how, how much is it? He said, well, what do you want to pay? And I said, well, frankly, I mean, really, I don't want to pay anything, but I mean, that's not right. And so, anyway, what happened was his father was a chief, and his father had purchased like hundreds of acres years ago and never had the money to do anything with it. And the government was threatening to take the land back because it hadn't been, nothing's been done. And so by the fact that I'm going to put a school on this property stops the government from taking it. And he said, I'll sell you 50 acres for $11,500. I didn't even have that, but anyway. And so I just went on Facebook. I said, who will help me? 
$250 an acre and we bought the property cash in three months. So enough of my commercials and I just want you to know God is faithful. And, and your pastor and his wife were talking about things God has brought them through. I think we must have been just about a year or two either before you or after you coming into Muncie. And God has been faithful. Yes, yes. And so today, the message I feel, I've been sent here just to be an encouragement to you. Uh, and I hope it is an encouragement. Today we're going to look at Jude chapter, well it's only one chapter in Jude. And it's verses 24 and 25. In Jude 24 and 25. I want to thank the sisters that are here with me, Sister Mary Jones and Sister Jean Webb. They travel with me everywhere. And you know, they were a blessing because even before my husband died, he said, you know, if you didn't have somebody to travel, I wouldn't I wouldn't want you to go half the places that you but because they're not that they're all that strong or nothing. Not, uh, they travel overseas with me. I was like, don't be afraid of that bug. You don't have to worry about that. I just rebuke it. You yeah. know, we were staying in a place and the roaches were about that big. And, and I don't like roaches. That I'm really scared. I'm really scared of everything. But God has done something to my mind. And it doesn't bother me. I mean, I don't want them on me. Don't get me wrong. But I don't, it doesn't bother me. And, and they were just crawling all over. I said, I can't live in a place like this. I just can't stay here like this. And my daughter said, well, Mom, you don't rebuke it. So I said, Roaches, in the name of Jesus, you do not cross this threshold till the day we leave. <laughs> and the next day, there was one right at the threshold. Oh. On his back, legs moving. And so he was saying, he didn't get the memo. <laughs> but we did not have any more roaches the rest of the trip. Listen, we got power through Jesus Christ. that you 
might be willing to do, not able. Things you're unable to do, but not willing. But there's always something that you can be willing and able to achieve and accomplish in the kingdom of God. So today I just want to share with you, just to highlight some of the things our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has been able to do. So when we look just in the New Testament, we haven't gone into the Old, but we'll just deal with the New Testament. And we start out with Jesus turning water into wine. Now, if that was just a normal phenomenon, anyone could have done it. But it was only by the power of the Almighty God that changed water into wine. What about healing the nobleman's son? What about raising Lazarus from the dead? What about the great catch of fish when they had fished all night and caught absolutely nothing? But at the word of Jesus Christ, they began to let out their nets and they caught an entire drop of fish. What about the demoniac that was full of demons? And when he came in contact with Jesus, Jesus spoke a word and commanded the demons to leave. I'm talking about Jesus Christ, who not only is willing, but he also is able. What about cleansing the leper? What about raising the widow of Nain's son? What about stealing the storm? raging and they thought uh, they were all going to die. Uh, all he had to do was stand up uh, and rebuke the storm uh, and commanded the storm uh, to be still. Uh, what about feeding 5,000? Uh, what about feeding 4,000? Uh, what about feeding one? Uh, what about delivering those that were bound? Uh, what about the power of God moving uh, in the lives of people? Receive 
you something. When Jesus was on the cross and when he finally died, the devil began to rejoice. He rejoiced because he thought that was the elimination of the answer for man's redemption. There's not going to be another Jesus to go on a cross. So if I can take him down, the human race will be at my pleasure. But God had another secret that nobody understood. Hallelujah. The Bible says when they put Jesus in the tomb and he stayed there for three days, the Bible says when Jesus got up, against the roughest thing. 
I mean, you could really fly. <laughs>
afraid of the terror, but right, right. nor for the arrow that wasted at noonday. Yes. A thousand shall fall at thy side, yes. ten thousand yes. at thy right hand, right. but it shall not come nigh to thee. Oh, hallelujah. You want to shout hallelujah. Now 